A very good morning and welcome to Asake Online. This is The Breakfast Club and my name is Siswagele Nlovu. With me on the show today, I have Unja Wulomoyo and he wears many hats. He's an author, he's a poet, he's a motivational speaker, he's a father, he's a husband, he's so many things. And let's just get straight to the conversation. Jabulo, welcome to The Breakfast Club. Thank you so much, Siswa, for that lovely introduction, eh? Um, I, I'm sure I missed a few things out. I'm sure there's much more than that she can add to it. So, Nkuteni, what did I miss? Yes, um, uh, well, I, I also work as a development practitioner. What it simply means is that I work with various communities in trying to enhance lives. And uh, through that, I've had multiple opportunities of interacting with individuals from different backgrounds, professions, which is something that is key for me as a, as a editor because it allows you to interact and meet people's realities. And uh, it's always a great feeling to, to appreciate that uh, we, are, we are in different contexts, but all of us are in the struggle of uh, trying to find social relevance. Ooh, social relevance. Okay, that's a big word. So what does it mean to have social relevance? Does it mean you're being a celebrity? Does it mean you have 2,000 likes on Facebook? What does it mean though? I think, well, our generation, the current generation is, is defining relevance as things that you are mentioning, being known on social media platforms and so forth. But for me, social relevance really is about our capacity to act as philanthropists, the capacity to, to lend a helping hand to the next person. And only then can we really be socially relevant. You can be relevant in terms of your business, in terms of your success, because people want to trade and make a profit with you. But I do believe that there is, a, there is a window of opportunity for you and I to become relevant by taking social causes, uh, things that are affecting people and finding solutions for our communities. For me, at the end of the day, it is a measure, it is a mark of success that we can never try and ignore. Okay, so we- That's why even people that are rich, people that are accomplished, you find them going back to, to the communities. To give back. So you, Yes. Okay. So in Jabulo, we didn't hear, come here to talk about philanthropy and everything. We came here to chat about your book, Toxic Ties. You are the author of, I'm, I've yes. lost sound. I know I've got two of your sketches of your soul. You personally autographed them and I still have them. And how many books have you written? What number is Toxic Ties? Uh, this is my eighth book. I um, might say in the genre of writing, I started writing poetry, which was a book called African Sketches. Really, African Sketches were, is actually a, a, a title of a South African jazz song. Uh, then when I was listening to the jazz song, African Sketches, uh, you know, it ringed something. And then I developed a poem, which later became the title of, uh, of, of the book. The title of the book later became the, the, the name of a publishing house that I ran. So for me, it shows the relationship between all forms of art. So from listening to a jazz song, I love jazz and I was inspired around this thematic with African sketches. So now we have, I we're looking at toxic ties because I've graduated within this, the eight books that I have I've produced. Uh, I'm, I'm at a point where um, relationships are very meaningful and where relationships are fragile because of uh, various global, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic, but we all need to be relatable. Okay. So as an author, I'm going to ask, a, it's probably a very naive question. So many forms, other forms of art have been affected so much by COVID-19. You know, your performing arts are not able to go out and hold gigs and venues are shut down and the whole town, well, the whole world basically was shut down and how that's how those particular forms of art were affected. As an author, did the COVID-19 affect you in any way because you're writing and you're still able to write? Um, has it had an impact on you and your line of work? Yes, uh, it, it has a uh, negatively impacted. Firstly, let me look at both sides of the coin. There have been negative aspects because as writers, you want to produce a product, you want to have a book launch which involves physical meetings, you want to be able to you know, move around, sell your product, you want libraries to, I mean, I mean libraries to access your work, you want bookshop to distribute your work. But if all these facilities are, are closed or they're operating at a less capacity, 
And also COVID has changed people's priorities. Obviously now your budgeting is always in view of ah, the future is uncertain. So even the, the population that would have invested in books, you find that maybe while least there are new people coming into because of the closed space, but also our, our souls have been affected. On the positive side, for me, uh, as a writer, you know, Chinua Achebe says that if you are a writer, you will write. So for me, it doesn't matter the context. As a writer, I am writing under this space, under COVID, and there's a lot of inspiration. And hence, I am focusing on the issue of relationships because there's a lot of information out there about domestic abuse, about divorce cases, about really toxic relationships. And uh, I write strongly about this word toxic uh, because really it's a reflection of how our society has become. And in this book, I argue that no one is born toxic. You are never born toxic. It means it is, it is, a, it is a trait, it is a character that we, 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 we develop through socialization. And somehow we also meet people that have got toxic relationships. So for me, the starting point is that no one is born toxic. Wow. Okay. Um, it's interesting you, you should talk about that because the COVID-19 pandemic made sure that everybody is cooped up in what I call unnatural spaces. I mean, even if you're in a relationship, you're married, somebody goes off in the morning, comes back in the evening, the kids go off to school. And now we, we were at a point where we were cooped up basically for such extended periods of time. There's no room to breathe. There's no room to have me time. Yes. And it brought out so much ugly in all of us. And then I find it strange when you say, <clears throat> are not born toxic. We are, it's, it's something we learn. So I'm, 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 I'm open yes. to finding out more about that. The issue is that uh, all of us, when we are born, we are like a, when we are born, we are like a blank city, you know, a compact disc. I know they are no longer popular these days, but when you are born, we are like an empty city. And the reason why a child knows that fire burns is because there are people around the child that keep on saying, Chichinana, there is fire, it burns. So those be become part of the natural behaviors of the child. So what I'm trying to say is that no one is born toxic, but it is society that makes us toxic. It is life experiences that makes us toxic. And the level of toxicity, you know, is subject to certain background issues, number one, we are all, I, I, I mean, when, when we are now experiencing life, we inherit conflict backs. Some of these conflict backs are a result of our, our, of our parents, their, their past uh, experiences. So when you meet Siswa, she already has got her own conflict back. Unfortunately, you don't know how many cages her conflict back weighs. So I have my own conflict bag, and when we meet, you find that maybe it's 2,000 cages each. And when we meet, we are trying to, to reduce the weight. And in trying to find ourselves, when conflict big meet, human beings are bound to react. And it is how we react. So number one, I'm, explain, I'm explaining the concept of toxicity as a consequence of conflict and history and background. So some people are toxic because of what they've experienced in the past. But secondly, some people are toxic because of perceptions. Because people think that you are going to be successful. They develop an attitude towards you because in their mind, they've never seen you as a person that they can, they can value. So that's the second level, the perceptions. <laughs> people, some people, they are hot spotted to hate you. <laughs> they are hating you because someone hates you. It's not like it's, it's in them, but they are bungled up and they, they become a, a whole a military against you and they hate you for no reason. So, but however, these people need to be conscious that they are actually toxic. So the starting point is for us to be aware that uh, we are toxic ourselves and how do we find out? Let's look around. How do you relate with people? There are people when you walk into a room, they just change. If they were smiling and glowing, they just go, they just look at their phone. <laughs> so observations can tell you, they can be a reflection of how you are relating to certain people. And then this person just walks in a, in a room and 
everyone is greeting them, everyone is glowing, everyone is trying to have a piece of who, who they are, everyone has got a time for them. So it can tell you uh, the nature of your relationships. So I always say in, 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 you know, in, my, in my many platforms that uh, there are no relationships when the relate part is gone. It's only a ship that is remaining. And that ship is bound to crash. So the starting point is for you to relate. There is no relationship when they, when the relating, the relate part once is once is dead. It's only a ship that remains, and a direction, a direction led ship can in the way you know it can crash into people. It can bend relationships. It can bend bridges. So in this book, I I I I, I identify different levels of toxicity, different types of people, but most importantly is an analogy that I use where I'm saying toxic ties, which refle- refers to toxic relationships. But they are um, a tie, you know, we are looking at something that binds things together. It's a, it's a bond, it's a, it's a unifier, it's a land. But when those ties are toxic, it could show you that uh, some ties are like a string, uh, which is loosely tied. So there are relationships that are, uh, are there, you know, convenience, compromise. Uh, that tie is one day bound to break. That tie is a loose end. So that's a, another form of a toxic relationship where you are in a relationship. And by the way, I'm not talking about, you know, you know, a romantic relationships. I'm looking at the term relationship in a broad, very broad manner that even with our parents, with our friends, at times there are loose ends. So those loose ends might need to be tightened up. But then there are also relationships that are very strong, the rope kind of relationships. They are, they, they, you know, it is well tied. And then there are people that actually come in to, to destroy the, those kind of relationships. So we need to be careful um, whom we hang, we hang around and even the, 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 the language that we use, the, the language that we use can be toxic in itself. We are joking with someone, but then you don't realize uh, how they are being affected by your jokes. And it is very common, especially with women, when they, they are, you know, they are growing around 25, 26. Everyone is asking you, when are you going to have children? But to the next person is, is like, it's a common question. But what if that person is good challenges around having children? That one is on, can be toxic, especially if you never have an opportunity to understand the struggles that the next person is going through, but you are using edge as a mark of how and where someone should be. You are using edge as a mark. You're asking why you're not getting married and so forth and so forth. But at times you, 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 you need, as human beings, we need to start reflecting, reflecting what we perceive life to be is not the reality of everyone. And in our conversations, we become toxic. You start seeing people avoiding you because we never have time to reflect that whereas I think Sizwa should be at this point of life. It is not obvious. It is not given. It is not too late for her to develop into social expectations, but it should always be her choice. Hmm. Sure. No, you, you, you've, you've given so much in Jabula, I'm just trying to, to process it. And also given the fact that um, during lockdown, relationships, everything, it seems like the whole world literally broke down. And it's quite scary because it seems like a lot of relationships are based on string. There was high rates of GBV, there was gender-based violence, there was domestic violence, there was parent, well, kids being beaten up by their parents. Mm-hmm. I didn't see at any point in time, any post on social media, everybody was bemoaning this aspect of relationships yes. of being together. And there's so much work that needs to be done. And as you mentioned, it's not just romantic relationships. It was across every single relationship, teachers and children. Yes. So you start wondering, Vele, what is this whole life built on? Um, the relating is so horrible. Like the ships, it's just basically ships um, bumping each other in the night. And it's such a scary prospect to think about. Do you provide any yes. solutions yes. or a hope to that, to that dire um, space? Yes, yes. 
I think uh, in the book, I also make several recommendations, but I want to start dealing with the self, the self. So the solution is within the self. Uh, mind you, I use the self as a, as a second character, as a persona, because there is Njabul or the person, but I do believe that inside Njabul there is the self. And what the self wants to do, the self is always seeking to identify, to be recognized to be given positive affirmation. That, that thing, the self is what comes out when it is uh, not satisfied. It's what becomes toxic. So we need to start dealing with the self. So as a solution, number one is, is the individuals, we need to have personal observations. Number two, there's a lot of talk around issues to do with, um, you know, uh, Health. Uh, unfortunately, maybe Zimbabwe is is largely a, 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 a reserved society. You know, you, you don't even have talk shows, simple talk shows. You don't even have talk shows that are, are speaking strongly into relationships. Whereas compared to our neighboring South Africa, people openly have conversations about relationships. And what it does is that it normalizes talking problems in relationships. Then our children, when they grow up, they can accept that there are challenges with the relationship between father and son. But if a society remains closed, the next person is afraid to share their experience. Society is closed. So one of the recommendations is to start building a society that is opening up. It is scary in Zimbabwe to, to, to have you talking about your divorce case on national television because of the kind of society that we have. But it is a, norm, a, a, norm, a, a normal scene in, in South Africa, in America, people, you know, they open up. So for me, the healing process, the, the environment to heal, as a society, we need to start accepting these things that yeah, we are psychologically traumatized due to several things, it could be COVID. So there is need for us to accept it at, at, at a personal level. And also there's a need for society also to to be ready, are we ready to even talk about relationships? I mean, that, 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 that's the issue. And I, I recommend in the book that the word toxic, you can have a positive view around the word toxic. So toxic in an acronym uh, means that uh, take corrective action. So the T stands for take corrective action over your life. So you need to take corrective action over your life experiences, right? the X there on toxic. Take corrective actions over your life experiences and immediately conquer. Take corrective actions over your life experiences and immediately conquer. So that is toxic. So that's another way. Toxic is generally a negative word, but I'm bringing a positive aspect to it, a positive feel to it that uh, while these people can say you are very toxic, it's okay, you can accept that you are toxic, but as you reflect, you need to take corrective action over your life experiences and conquer. It's a process, uh, but I do. I, I built a sense of agency that you conquer immediately because uh, uh, relationships are as good as we treat ourselves. You are a reflection of how you treat yourself, right? You are a reflection of how you treat yourself. How people treat you then is, uh, is, 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 is subjective. It's about their perception. It's about their past experiences and the like. But I'm one person who does believe that there's an opportunity for us to not fix relationship. Because one of the problems is that we're always trying to fix things. And in the process of trying to fix relationships, we actually break. You know, when they are fixing something, if it means you are taking your spanner and you are tightening things, that's, that's the fixing process. So for me here, it's <laughs> let us heal relationship. Let us not try to fix it. Let's heal relationships. How we can heal is, 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 is around also getting literature. Let's read about, you know, marriage, also read about, of course, there is a practical side, but there are people that have written practically information which can help us as a society. And uh, lastly, you know, <laughs> some of us are generally angry. You are generally angry, angry. People just are angry, angry. You are waking up, you are angry. 
You're sleeping, you're angry. Your dreams are angry. <laughs> Everything about you is angry. So, so some of it is also spiritual. You know? <laughs> it's also spiritual. So for you to heal, it's also about your, your attitude, your personality. You can change the way you dress. It changes the way you feel about yourself. If you feel good about yourself, you want other people to also feel good. So experiment, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money, minimum cost, feel good, appreciate life. Right now, everyone is crying about COVID. Life is tough. It becomes tougher when you are stupid. And, uh, you know, stupidity is something that is for free. You, you choose how much of it you want. You, you can award. You can have a whole bell, a bell, a stupidity. You can go back to the issue of uh, how we mold our surroundings, how we interact, human interactions, um, and the energy that we bring into life. Double, you mentioned so many interesting points. It's so hard to talk about mental health. <laughs> And even with, I'm having issues, uh, and I feel like at this point in time, there's no support anywhere. There's no support at home. There's no support in the church. There's no support socially yes. because church, you hear stories going around, and your social circles, your friends are actually the ones doing stuff behind your back and spreading the, the um, all the stories about you. Uh -huh. There does not seem to be any support. And what is the person supposed to do in such a situation in trying to offload and trying to to get assistance and besides also um they'll tell us i'm a psychologist and things like that we cannot afford i'm a psychologist so basically i feel at times we yes. are alone in this world with all these experiences and worse off now with covid covid has affected everybody how do i take my burden to the next person when they are already burdened so is there any solution to that being alone by yourself fighting these demons in the dark? Well, thank you. I mean, also thanks to COVID. I don't believe that we are in a global world and uh, the internet is an opportunity. You go to YouTube. I, I use YouTube a lot. There's a lot of inspirational videos, transformational stories, uh, messages, people with experiences that we have. So the point is the experiences that you are having, they are not new. These are not unique experiences. There are people that have experienced these things before and they've been open enough to share these things on various social media platforms. Of course, we'll talk about we don't have money for data, but look at what you are investing. We have money for WhatsApp. We have money for, for TikTok, for Instagram. I have nothing against these platforms. But again, I'm adding to say, you can also invest in, in platforms that have got inspirational content. Yes, you have. You need content that you get, get you shaking your body, smiling and laughing. But at some point, you also need content that uh, can uh, really build the inner energy that can really appeal to the, to the, you know, when you look at Maslow, he talks about the needs, the hierarchy of needs, and that they are physiological needs. They are, you know, there are needs for uh, 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 affirmations and affiliation, needs for love. So there is a whole global network of platforms that we can use. Uh, even this opportunity, this conversation that we are having right now is a healing conversation. It's a healing conversation because, uh, you know, for once as, as, as young Zimbabweans, we are open and having a conversation about the need to, to fight toxic relationships, the need for us to mold ourselves. They need to appreciate that there are positive things in this life. Even the way we speak to each other, you know, Zukupane as Kupi, how is life? Uh, there they, they are hopeless conversations out there. We need to reignite energy. You ask me how I am, I am doing well. It's a starting point, not that I'm trying to pretend, but it's a positive affirmation. I am doing good, I am doing well. Under the circumstances, you are doing well. I want to tell the, that under these circumstances, you are doing well and stop this attitude of looking for endorsement, stop this attitude of measuring life on certain parameters that we get from other people. You are doing well in this life. It is, it, it is not new, it is not unusual for you to suffer, to have consequences, to be broke. It is not a new thing. 
But at the end of the day, then it's about what we do about those circumstances. I tell you, all the successful people in the world were driven by circumstances. So who are you not to experience circumstances? Let your situations, uh, you know, uh, never situate you. Don't allow situations to situate you. So that one of the crises that we have is that we are looking for validation. You are enough. Stop looking for external validation. I validate myself when I look at myself in the mirror. You are enough. And then it gives me a positive life, uh, attitude towards life. And we should always learn to try new things. Uh, it's COVID, yes, but try new things. Find new strengths about yourself. Find a mentor. There are a lot of people that have got uh, life experiences. There are a lot of people that have achieved. There are a lot of people who have gone through harassment, rape, being broke, and family disintegrations. All people, all that people see at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, Tupac, it was Tupac who says that uh, no one knows my, 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 my struggle, you know. They only see the trouble. No one knows my trouble, they only see my, my struggle, they only see the trouble. So, so at the end of the day, it's you who has to understand yourself. It's only you who can then find solutions to this life. So for me, those are some of the recommendations that I, 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 I think they become important to us. You are never useless. You know, when somebody asks you, are you okay? Then you say, I'm happy. They're like, hey, what's there to be happy about? There is such a negative culture. So sometimes you just get tempted to say, to just go with the flow, just to shut them up. Because the minute you stand out and seem to be happy or something, you get more attention, negativity, and people just coming around you at you to say, why are you so happy? There's nothing to be happy about and blah, 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 blah. So sometimes I find it easier. This is not a personal thing. Say, okay, fine. I'm fine. I'm not okay or this and that. Because people expect, unhappy people don't like to see happy people. So if you stand out, then it just attracts all this unwarranted yes. on you. So sometimes it's just like, oh, Ooh, let it go and but what do you have to say to that do you just soldier on and say i'll be happy by myself and everybody else falls away the sad reality about life is that people want us to live within a cocoon people love you for as much as they can control you they love you for as much as they can control you the moment you start moving out from that sake people start hating you uh, I don't know, maybe it's natural or it's, 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 it's jealous or there are psychological theories to explain that. But that should not stop you from moving out. Move out of spaces that are toxic. Because there are certain people that want you to measure success according to them. They want to be the barometer of your life. They want to be the stencil of your life. They might want to be the epitome of your life. They're actually drawing a line and saying, Cizwa should never cross this line. They should never go beyond. They should only see Masai River. They should never see the Pacific Ocean. There are people like that. So when you when you when you start seeing beyond, uh, you know, <laughs> a river, and you're seeing an ocean, we are going to be in trouble with people that, in their mind, they've always seen success as being defined by by them. So they they even struggle to accept that you are happy because happiness is one of the biggest currencies in this world and it is something that you don't find in a place the happiness is not found in a place in a house in a car yes all these things will give you joy but they might not give you happiness happiness is an inner feeling and that's why people worry when you have that inner feeling and then they start making accusations they start wanting to know what's really happening. So if you are happy, you are happy, enjoy life in that sphere. You don't, you don't owe anyone an explanation. You don't owe anyone. Well, you need to, you don't have to apologize for being happy. So I think that's something we also need to take in as, 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 as you know, as young Africans that a person, things can go well for a person. They can just go well. It's, it's a phase. Life is about phases and things go well. And you need to stop focusing on the negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's because you can only capture what you focus on. 
What are your last words for our our viewers? Because also we are have just embarked on another lockdown, which will possibly be where we are confined back with each other in that same environments that we were in, we're struggling with in 2020. What do you have for viewers who are listening, given that we are we are in this space right now? It is our environment that is on lockdown, not your mind. So I think for me, that is my message to people out there that the environment is what is on lockdown, but our minds should keep on, you know, engineering uh, new realities. And in one of my books, I define power as people of will, engineering reality. So you need to show that you've got the power to engineer reality by, you know, being a person of will, even within this context, within this environment. So you don't become your environment. You become what your mind is, is thinking. So let's tame the environment, let's accept the environment, uh, but above all, you know, keep on doing what you want to do, COVID aside. Some of us are just giving excuses. Even if, even if there was no COVID, you would still be seated at home and doing nothing. Yeah. So yeah. toxic ties coming soon. Hope uh, that you are going to enjoy this uh, marvelous piece of art. Thank you. Jabulu Moyo, thank you so much for being a part of the Breakfast Club and all those positive words that you have given. And basically, Uti, just keep the faith, keep going. And your environment is not your mind. I look forward to getting a copy of your book, of a, of your book when it does come through. And we wish you all the best in Jabulu. Thank you so much. All righty. That's all we have on The Breakfast Club today. I was chatting to Unjabulo Moyo, and he is an author, a motivational speaker, and a poet. And we were having a discussion on relationships, which is a key element in, in the times we're in, because we've had lockdown. We've been stuck at home with our significant others and our children and our parents and our siblings. And it's been trying times. So if you can get a copy, um, do get hold of Njabulo on his various social media platforms. Njabulo, actually, please share your platform media, your social media platforms. Yes, I am a Njabulo Moyo author speaker on Facebook, uh, at Njabulo Moyo on Instagram, on Twitter. So I everything is under my, 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 my name, you know. So Njabulo Moyo author speaker, you find me on Facebook. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So if you'd like a copy of that, do follow him on his social media platforms and Jabulo Moyo author speaker. And as I said, that's all we have on The Breakfast Club. Please keep watching Asake online and please remember to mask up, sanitize your hands regularly, maintain social distance, and please stay at home if there is no need for you to be out and about. My name is Sister Lentlovo and that's all for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>